Wasabi guys, welcome back to another Market Watch video. The 14th of April, we have new Capenna influence. We have some really bizarre cards here and some pretty big price changes. I mean, some of that really did surprise me. And I know that typically when a new set like this comes out, especially when there's a lot of Commander products, you're going to see some prices change. You're going to see some kind of combo, maybe with an older card that hasn't been reprinted before. And you'll see something that was maybe a couple dollars before, suddenly 20. But before I get into it, first, I would like to remind you, if you appreciate the videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. First one we have is Hellcarver Demon from Rise of the Eldrazi. Now, back in the day when we got the first Commander product with Kalia, no doubt, I'm sure a lot of you wanted to experiment with Hellcarver Demon. The only problem is you have to get rid of a lot of permanents. And this is all on dealing combat damage to a player, so you would have to fool around in some kind of Kalia way to really make this worth it, to really make it effective. And not only do you have to sacrifice all of your other permanents, but you have to discard your hand. What's the payoff here? You exile the top six cards of your library, and you may cast any number of non-land cards exiled without paying their mana cost. Now, I know that sounds pretty bad in Commander, giving up pretty much your entire board presence for six cards that may or may not be good, but when you think about standard, it is a little less terrible. That being said, playability for this card is pretty much commander. <laughs> it is now over $5, and the chart isn't going to lie to you. This has been a sub $2 card for pretty much its entire existence. So to see it go up this quickly, it would indicate that there is something new from New Capenna. That being said, we've seen this time and time again. Brand new synergies. Sometimes there's a market overreaction, and then it begins to settle. So this is something, if you have it, if you have a ton of Hellcarver Demons, now's your time to shine. Next up, we have another card that is probably because of New Capenna. Oh, I don't know. We have brand new three color cards. Wargate. Wargate has always been a good one. If there's a downside, it's that when Commander ages, things tend to get a bit quicker. Things tend to get a bit more powerful. At Sorcery Speed, essentially Court of Calling any permanent card is awesome. If you think about it, you're kind of making the same sacrifice that you would with any tutor. You're paying an additional amount of mana to make sure that you get the card you want from your library. As long as it's a permanent, you could put it straight into play. But here's the thing, you're going to see listings all over the place. I've seen a lot of listings around $20, so you're getting people wanting to push it up even higher. As you can see, the market price is still adjusting. I would expect that to change by next week. I don't think it's going to stay around $5. It's probably going to go up to $20. It's just one of those commander cards that if you need a combo piece, it's there. Anytime you have this kind of consistency in commander, it really helps you win games. And here we have another card. This is a very familiar face. Talk about her quite a bit with combo videos. Devoted Druid. Now this is specifically the one from Ultimate Masters that's seeing the biggest price change. If you were to look at the one from Shadowmoor, it hasn't changed quite as much, but then again, you're going to have more market impact on cards when they're more readily available. And there are probably more Ultimate Masters Devoted Druids compared to Shadowmoor ones. Since you have more activity, retailers are going to be pricing more competitively. So it's not a fake out. It's not sellers looking to list this card for an unreasonable asking price, because as you can see, it's also driving up the market price. People are actually willing to spend that money on what is a two mana mana dork with some combo potential. Now this one's even crazier because the market price, I don't even think is correct. You see this sometimes on mtgstocks.com where it'll have a correct average and then it'll have a market price that is just way too high. It doesn't make any sense for it to be that high because why would anyone buy it for that, you know, $56 when they don't have to? They could just get it for 20 So this is one where I'd have to caution people against it. It's a good card. I don't think there's really anything new that would be released that would increase the chances of it seeing even more play. It's not like we were looking for cards to break it. So Nuka Pen is kind of not really a factor in my opinion. Now, is this in the future capable of being a $40, $50 card? Sure. But as you can see, ever since Ikoria, this hasn't really gotten above $20 and stayed above it. So I would call this an error. I would call this fake news all day. You can even go on TCGplayer.com yourself to see the listing prices. I mean, that's where MTG Stocks is getting all the data from anyway. And as you can see, near mint $20. You can even get a foil for around $20. That's pretty ridiculous. So I would just be aware that whenever you go on any of these websites and they're gathering data and they're telling you this is the current price, go and check 
for yourself, go and check to see what people are actually listing them for. And if the first page is what you're seeing right here and it's all relatively around the listing price, then you know it's probably an error. This time it looks to be on MTG stock side. Now we get to talk about some losers for the week. We have Reality Spasm. Any Hinata fans out there? I'm pretty sure you all saw this coming. It was never going to be a big money card. It's an uncommon from Rise of the Eldrazi. The only printing of it, which is why it was able to get up to around four. And as you can see, it's settling down around two and probably going to go down even further as people start to take a step back from that commander. I think it goes without saying that without that commander option, most people would probably just ignore this card altogether. What really made it special was the fact that you could reduce the X cost to essentially zero because each mana into X is what you're targeting. So that was a really cool synergy. It was easy to combo with it. And Hinata has been one of the more popular commanders from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. But there is a season for all things and commander popularity. It does come and go. Next up, we have a card that I think might be flying under the radar just a little bit. And it is a losing value compared to last week. We have Unbound Flourishing from the original Modern Horizons. I love this card. I think it is so specific specific to X costs that it could be an auto include for a lot of future strategies. Basically, it just doubles X cost. We were just talking about an X costed spell. You get to double the value of a permanent with X, and you get to copy the instants and sorceries with X costs as well. All this for a permanent that sits on the field. I really do think that this is a future ready card. It is just waiting for the right commander, and then more people are going to be talking about it. I really like this at $4, and I think you should feel comfortable too if you can get it for under 5 And the last card to talk about, this is our last loser too. Speaking of cards that are future ready vault of champions you could look at some of the other ones from commander legends but this is one that has gone down a little bit compared to last week so i think it's worth talking about it seeing an average listing price around seven an average market price five to six dollars i think that is a steal considering that these are probably the best that you're gonna get to the dual lands without actually having a basic land type to search up because they come into play untapped almost every time you're playing a commander game it's as easy as putting in a command tower let's just put it that way. I would keep an eye out on this. You look at the chart, that is a very good chart. If you're ever looking to buy cards that you think are flying under the radar, Commander Legends is that kind of set where it has a ton of these. That is stability. I mean, we're talking about over a year, it's gone from around six to eight dollars, which is very good. And lands don't tend to lose their value unless they're reprinted in a ton of pre-con decks, which I don't think we really have to worry about them giving us too many good quality lands. It seems that only recently wizards have been okay with giving us the scry lands. So anything that's actually worth money, you can hold on to it knowing that it'll probably hold its value. So that's going to do it for today's Market Watch video, the week's Market Watch. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section below, especially the biggest gainers. Again, go on these websites, check it for yourself. Always double check, back it up with a second source. Commander Void here signing off. I will see you all next time.